Um, before we start, let me say a few words on the IPE, on the Institute for International Political Economy. The Institute was founded in 2008 as an in institute, as we call it, at the Berlin School of Economics and Law. Currently, the Institute has 25 members from uh, different social sciences, so from economics, from sociology, uh, political science, and law. We are eight full professors, four retired, but still very active uh, founding professors of the IPE. We have one visiting professor, three postdocs, uh, seven junior researchers and PhD students, and two student assistants. Uh, furthermore, the IPE has 20 uh, or so associate members, um, former professors who've moved on to other universities, uh, former members uh, who are now working in the parliament uh, or with the trade unions or think tanks uh, and which create a nice network uh, uh, around or with the IP. Uh, the IP uh, has clustered its research in uh, four research areas. Uh, the first one is political economy and the welfare state. The second one is financialization, macroeconomics and economic policies. Uh, the third one is globalization and the global south. Uh, and the fourth one is uh, socio-ecological and economic uh, transition. We have just relaunched our website right in time uh, for this event, uh, also thanks to Anne Martin. Uh, and you, if you want to learn more uh, about the research and uh, the events uh, of the IPE, uh, you, uh, I, I suggest uh, that you visit uh, the website, which is www ipe-berlin.org. Um, on the website, you can also register with the IPE newsletter, and you can also follow us on Twitter. I, I think I would never have mentioned such a thing three years ago, but this is technological change, and uh, if you want to call it a technological progress. Um, so this is on the IPE. Uh, now, uh, at the IPE, we have been doing research uh, on macroeconomic regimes from different perspectives for several years. And if we look at our current workshop topic, uh, which is uh, on macroeconomic regimes, post-Keynesian and critical uh, political uh, uh, economy perspectives, and we go back a bit uh, in the history of economic thought, we find, of course, and I think this is well known in the current audience, that the research on social institutional and macroeconomic regimes uh, in, uh, in capitalism has a, had a long tradition in heterodox economics and in political economy. Uh, those of you who are familiar with more traditional Marxian theory and Marxian research know about uh, the uh, research, the theories about the different stages of capitalism, uh, so the competitive stage, the monopoly state, and then the state monopolistic state. And I remember that during my studies at the University of Bremen in the 1980s, uh, we even talked about some variants in the state monopolistic state of capitalism. Um, we've had uh, the regulation school, uh, mainly based in France, in which a distinction was made between the Fordist uh, or the Fordist accumulation regime of the 50s and 60s. And then there was a lot of research on post Fordist uh, regimes. Uh, and uh, Robert Boyer, for instance, in the early 2000s, came up with the idea that we are now in a kind of finance led growth regime, which has triggered a lot of further research. Parallel to this uh, Ecole de la, de la Regulation, the regulation school in France, we have had a similar development in the US, uh, the social structure of accumulation approach, mainly based at the University of Massachusetts uh, in Amherst and at the New School for Social Research. research where also a distinction has been made about different stages of the development of capitalism, so from the competitive the social structure of accumulation towards the monopoly SSA, then towards the regulated SSA of the 1950s and 1970s, then the global neo neoliberal uh, uh, social structure of accumulation basically since the 1980s. Um, also, post Keynesians have, have thought about different stages of development of capitalism. 
uh, at least in post-Keynesian theory and research, a distinction has been made between the golden age period of capitalism, so the 1950s uh, and uh, till the 1970s, and then the neoliberal uh, or the finance-dominated version of capitalism since the early 1980s. A variant of this, uh, focusing more on the development and the financial sector and the role of the financial sector, is the late Minsky's uh, distinction between different stages of capitalism. So with, he has used different wording in his research. So the distinction between a commercial capitalism and paternalistic capitalism, and then the latest stage, which he called the money manager capitalism. Uh, I think what we will be doing at this workshop is not uh, directly uh, or is not exactly uh, what I've described here. So looking at the different stages of global capitalism, uh, what we will be doing here is rather looking at uh, the coexistence, um, the simultaneous coexistence of different regimes in modern capitalism. Of course, uh, this has had a long tradition in comparative political economy. Uh, most famous, of course, uh, is here the, the work by Hall and Soskic on the varieties of capitalism, distinguishing between the liberal market economies and the coordinated market economies. But there are also other traditions in comparative political economy, and I'm sure I cannot be exhaustive uh, here at this stage. But what comes to my mind is, for instance, the research based on the works of uh, Esping Andersen, uh, and then in the later developments by Hay and Winkart, for instance, on different welfare state models. So the distinction between an Anglo-Saxon liberal welfare state, a continental European or cooperative welfare state, a Scandinavian, uh, a Mediterranean, and, uh, and recently then uh, also the Central Eastern European welfare state. Um, what uh, has impressed me a lot is then also in this tradition, the work by Bruno Amable, uh, who has uh, built or has come up with very complex uh, um, um, regime structures uh, focusing on institutional complementarities. Uh, he's given, a, I think he was the last in-person presentation at the IPE. Uh, in January uh, 2020, or maybe early February 2020, when we had him for an IPE political economy uh, forum where he presented this approach. So this is, I think, roughly the, the development within comparative political economy. Uh, in post-Keynesian macroeconomics, the uh, research on regimes uh, is usually associated with the works of uh, Amit Baduri and Stephen Marklin, a famous paper published in 1990 in the Cambridge Journal of Economics, uh, in which using a Koletskian uh, macro model, they have made the distinction between wage-led and profit-led demand and growth regimes. In a sense, a very narrow research question, namely, uh, what happens if income distribution uh, is changing in their original paper? What happens if the real wage rate is changing? Uh, when uh, productivity is constant, then this is equivalent, of course, to a change in income distribution. And what are the effects on uh, aggregate demand and on growth? There was simultaneous work by Heinz Kurtz in a more complex model, uh, and Robert Blacker had uh, an earlier paper coming to similar conclusions for an open economy model. Uh, so this is one tradition we have, have in post-Keynesian economics. There's another one which is based also at the Berlin School of Economics and Law, although the research was done well before, I think, the IPE was introduced. That is the work which Hans-Jörg Herr has done with different co-authors on macroeconomic policy regimes. So here, there, the question was, how can we explain different performances of different um, developed capitalist economies? And from the post-Keynesian perspective, the idea was, well, it must have to do or can have to do with uh, the setup and the interaction of macroeconomic policies. Uh, this has then also been extended towards uh, developing uh, or emerging capitalist economies. So how together with uh, Jan Prive, for instance, and Milka Kazanciska. 
With Achim Truga, I have used a similar approach while we were working at the Macroeconomic Policy Institute and at the WSI and the Böckler Foundation, where we have tried to uh, well, make use of that in a standardized way in order to interpret the different performance of different countries, mainly of the developed capitalist economies. Mm. Then uh, in the around 2007, eight and nine, post Keynesians have then started to examine also the demand and growth regimes under the conditions of finance dominated capitalism. And we have used different terminologies, uh, so apologies for using my own, uh, where we have uh, distinguished different types of regimes, so export led mercantilist regimes, weekly export-led regimes, domestic demand-led regimes, and debt-led uh, private demand boom regimes, sometimes called debt-led consumption uh, regimes. Um, lately, uh, although it already started in the mid-1990s, there is uh, also within post-Keynesian economics another strand of research which can also be used in order to distinguish different regimes of capitalism, and that is related to uh, the Serafian super multiplier models, which have become, or which have been invented by the work of Serrano in the mid-1990s, and in which um, uh, uh, the idea is that growth is driven by some autonomous non-capacity creating a component of aggregate demand. And you can use this model in order to derive consumption driven, autonomous consumption driven growth models, uh, residential investment driven growth regimes, government driven uh, growth regimes or export driven growth regimes. Now, to my knowledge, uh, with the work of Bakaro and Pontus in 2016, this kind of post-Keynesian research uh, got into the comparative uh, political economy debate uh, when they tried to edit the growth regime uh, approach, as they call it, or integrate the growth regime approach, as they call it, into uh, the debate on the varieties of capitalism. Um, Four of, uh, or the group of presenters also in this workshop, so Sedelik, Mölke, Martins, Mai, have then made use of this idea, uh, not only for developed capitalist economies, but also for emerging market uh, economies. And I'm glad that they will present uh, the latest or their latest work here in this workshop. On the other hand, the post Keynesians have also tried to uh, get into dialogue with comparative political economy and integrate comparative political economy arguments into their research. I've tried to, to do that together with uh, two Italian colleagues, uh, Patanesi, Meloni, and Tridico, integrating the uh, welfare state regime approach with the post Keynesian demand regime uh, uh, under finance nominated capitalism. Um, Köhler and Stockhammer, and this will also be presented in this workshop, have examined growth drivers uh, to explain the change in regimes uh, across time. Uh, with Judith Marchin, and we will also present this uh, paper here in this, this workshop, uh, we have uh, tried to, uh, to link the notion of macroeconomic demand and growth regimes with the notion of macroeconomic policy regimes. And Engelbert Starkhammer, who will present last uh, uh, in this workshop tomorrow, that will be the last presentation, has tried to generalize all that and has tried to come up with a paper on the post-Keynesian foundations of comparative or critical political economy. So this is what our workshop tries to contribute to. So our workshop tries to contribute to the interaction, the debate, and the cross fertilization of post Keynesian macroeconomics and comparative political economy. Of course, uh, we would also uh, link the research which we have been doing at the IPE for the last couple of years with leading research in the respective fields. And I would like to thank our international and national guests in particular uh, for being available for this workshop on a relatively short notice because we only started organizing that uh, in uh, in February this year. 
Uh, so thank you all very much for accepting uh, the invitation and thank you very much for uh, contributing to this workshop. I hope this workshop will cover interesting areas uh, in a more or less systematic way, but of course the workshop uh, cannot be comprehensive in any sense and it can only be a start of debate or it can contribute to ongoing debates. Uh, let me briefly share my screen so that we can go through the program of today and uh, tomorrow, uh, which you should see here. So um, I hope you can see that. I can make maybe enlarge this a bit. Uh, so today we will start uh, with uh, two presentations which are based uh, on the post-Keynesian uh, distinction between wage and profit-led regime. Regimes, the first paper will apply that to a set of countries which have not been examined so far, so, far, so emerging economies. Um, and in the second presentation, um, we will see uh, the link with policies, uh, with income-led policies, and the example will be Korea. I will introduce the presenters uh, when we start with this session. In the second session of today, we will then, sorry, that was too quick. We will then move towards uh, the emerging economies, the emerging capitalist economies, and we will have a first presentation on comparative capitalism growth models and emerging markets. And the second one will then uh, uh, focus on financialization and macroeconomic regimes in emerging capitalist countries before and after uh, the Great Recession. Um, so this will be the program for today. Um, tomorrow we will then again start at one o'clock uh, and we will have uh, two presentations focusing on specific um, questions, specific features uh, in the area of comparative political, critical political economy and post Keynesian macro. One, a more historical uh, presentation on uh, the uh, balance of power between the Bundesbank and the Ministry of Finance and the contribution of all that to the German, to the development of the German uh, regime, uh, which at least till the Corona crisis uh, was character characterized. Uh, by fiscal austerity to a large degree. Then a second presentation will rather focus on Ireland, but try to generalize that and come up with the idea of um, commercialized states uh, in relationship with the role of multinationals. Um, the second presentation, or uh, well, the second session uh, tomorrow, will then uh, focus on uh, Regime, regimes and regime changes. So the first presentation will be on uh, the drivers which are behind different macroeconomic regimes and will come up with an explanation of what has happened after the crisis, the 2007-2009 crisis in particular. And the second presentation, um, we will then focus on uh, linking up the notion of macroeconomic regimes uh, with the notion of macroeconomic policy regimes from the post Keynesian perspective, and trying to explain how uh, what the role of macroeconomic policy regimes has been for the change in the macro regime, uh, which we've seen in four major eurozone crises, uh, eurozone countries. Sorry. The final session tomorrow uh, will then uh, cover two presentations, one on, um, on modeling um, regimes, uh, use, making use of uh, a Srafian super multiplier approach, and also modeling regime changes. Um, and the last one by Engelbert Starkhammer will then in a sense wrap up and try to provide post Keynesian macroeconomic foundations for comparative political economy. So that's the program for today uh, and uh, for tomorrow. Um, I hope it's interesting and I hope it, we will have uh, interesting presentations and in particular lively and uh, interesting discussions. Um, let me finish this introduction with some technical notes. Um, we uh, we'll have two presentations per session and we agreed that we should have the two presentations in a row and each presentation should not last longer than 25 minutes, please. 
Uh, and then this will give us 40 minutes for discussion of the two presentations. Um, Please make use of the chat function in Zoom uh, if you want to raise a question or want to make a comment. And please just type Q or C uh, into the chat function. That is what we will then see, and we will take you in the order uh, of your uh, of your of your questions or comments. Um, we will, since this is meant to be a workshop, we will then ask you to switch on your camera and your microphone, and to ask your question and uh, to make your comment. And we would like to briefly introduce yourself, so your name and your affiliation. Please keep your questions short uh, or your comments short so that we can enter into a lively discussion. Um, we will also stream this work workshop via the IPE YouTube channel, which we have just set up. I'm curious to see how this works. Um, but only people in the Zoom uh, room will be able to participate in the discussion. Um, a couple of days after the workshop, uh, we will then upload the presentations, but we will not record and not upload the discussions. The reason for that is we don't want to constrain participants. Um, being aware that it might be on the web forever, people might be reluctant to ask questions or to comment. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, only the presentations uh, will be documented on our website uh, via our uh, YouTube channel, but not the discussion. I hope that this arrangement uh, will be in favor of, a, of an engaging and a very critical and lively discussion. That's it from my side for the introduction. So thank you all for joining this work workshop. Many thanks in particular for the speakers to contribute to this workshop. And I'm looking forward to interesting presentations and very lively discussions. Thank you very much. <laughs>